It's a very warm welcome back. We're starting to unpack the state of the province. Now, you've probably been hearing this word, Bokone Bupurima, quite a bit and wondering, where on earth is this place? <laughs> well, the Northwest province, if you're in this part of the world, this is what they call it. This is the name uh, that they've given this province. And the true name, I guess, as you've embraced it, Premier? Northwest in Setswana yes. is Bokone Bupurima. There we go. Now, you know that in the State of the Province address, we have made a proposal to change the name to Moses Kodan. It's right. necessary to do so. Okay. Whilst we're there, um, I've got a question here from Tabo Natso, who says, is it possible, according to the Constitution, to name a province after an individual? Well, of course, uh, the South African Constitution allows us to do anything as long as it is within the prescripts and the confines of the constitution. So we don't see any problem in us renaming this province after our icon of the revolution of the South African people, Malome Moses Kodani. Of course, Peter, the people ultimately have to be the deciders on this particular mm -hmm. matter. That's why there's going to be intensive consultation. The Geographic Names Committee will come into the picture. And finally, the legislature. The constitution says a, the majority of the members of the legislature to, through a voting process of two-thirds mm. can take the decision to change the name of the province. So ultimately, that is what is going to happen. It's exciting. I think our people are excited to embrace the values that uh, Moses Kotani pursued. And we must make sure that we retain his legacy forever for many generations to come. Okay. Uh, a question from Tabo Bota says, um, why have uh, sitting allowances to traditional councillors not been paid since 2010? Well, to the best of my knowledge, uh, there are traditional uh, leaders who are sitting in the municipalities and they are getting their allowances. There were problems with uh, some of the traditional leaders in Dr. Russo Humuzi Mumbati, and that problem was resolved. But if we can know which traditional leader is he or she referring specifically to, that matter will be attended to. For instance, Kosi Mangope for some time had not been getting uh, the allowance uh, as, as a Kosi, and that matter was rectified uh, last month, and they are getting their, their allowance. So we are there to resolve whatever problem that is there as soon as they get in touch with us. All right, uh, MEC, a question here from Given John. Um, are these institutes of agriculture and tourism really being prioritized? Yes, Peter. This is the, the vision of the, 20, um, of the fifth administration. We are saying agriculture, culture and tourism is the priority. We are looking towards, I think, what, what we are saying is in order to move in this direction, we want to set up cooperatives. Our young people need to get into farming. Um, I think it is important for us to, to encourage young people to get into farming. And there are institutions that are available. We need to get our young people into these institutions to go and study, to go and learn, but also to get onto the land and to get them into farming. So yes, it is being prioritized. It is a priority of this fifth administration. Okay, well, let's go to the floor now and uh, table 17 will find, is it in Port Zouli? Yes, it is. Yes, your Thanks, question. Thanks, uh, Peter. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, greetings to our esteemed uh, panelists. Uh, my both questions are directed uh, to the MEC. Uh, the first question uh, that the Premier has already uh, explained, what are the timelines and funding model of the ecotourism in, uh, in Madiko, Pilanisbek and Muruleng? The second question is, uh, what are the implementation timelines for the Platinum Valley SEZ, uh, which has been earmarked for implementation in the uh, Bujanala district? Thank you. Okay. All right, so the first one I think has been addressed. Second one, timelines for the Platinum Valley SEZ. Well, as far as the Platinum Valley SEZ is concerned, people have to understand that 
We are currently at uh, initial stages of a feasibility study. Hmm. We are working together with the national government to pursue that particular matter. And people should also understand that it's going to take some time before we can arrive at results in as far as this particular matter is concerned. But we have agreed with the minister that working with the province, we will pursue uh, that particular matter. We are also pursuing introduction of an agriculture SEZ, which will be based in the Nakamudremolema district municipality, so that uh, you've got two, because this Platinum Valley uh, project is going to take us not less than 15 years to come to some kind of a decision on how we are going to be using Platinum as a value to attend to some of the problems that we are facing in the, in the economy. Okay. Uh, table 15, and Tate Nelson, I can't quite read your uh, surname here, your writing, so if you could just help me. Thank you, thank you, Victor. Nelson Mongali. Okay. Uh, thank you, Premier and the colleagues on the table. Mine is not a question, it's just a recommendation. More especially the approach to the small dorpies. I did a study previously in the province, and for my surprise, some of the good economic spin-outs were from small dorpies. Yeah. What I will recommend again, Premier, is to say, and Remo Kor will also maybe support me on this one, to say, let's re-establish the Northwest Regional Research Council. Because if we have the Regional Research Council of the province, then it means the IPs of the province will not go out of the province because I think for now we don't even know what are we supposed to outsource and not what to outsource. And most of our IPs are lying in Pretoria and we lose a lot of money with that. And the small torpies will do an economic profile to say what is happening in that small torpy. What is going out there? Where is it going to? To whom is it going to? At what cost? Mm. And who is holding it at what status? So that we have an economic profile, so that we develop, like Mewendi is already saying, to develop corporate clusters now to revitalize the economy within those small dorpies with a what approach. Thank you. Okay, your thoughts? He's right. You see the... Our intention, Peter, as far as the villages, the township, and the small door piece is concerned, amongst other things, is to attend to this issue of tax shops and saloons. But I'll just talk about tax shops. Our, our, our approach as a province is that uh, we shouldn't be focusing on foreign nationals, really. What we should be focusing on is uh, the two problems that characterize our, our tax shops in the villages and the townships. The first problem, it is the profit margin. Now, the problems of the profit margins comes as a consequence of where they source the products that they sell. And our proposal is that we are going to be working together with all the tax shops owners so that we can combine our effort in making sure that uh, we combine value so that we, when we combine value, it will be much easier for them to increase the possibility of, um, of, uh, of profits. That's, that's the, first, the first thing. The second thing is to attend to administration, how they are run, the, the tax shops, for instance. So it will be a combination of that and then administration with assistance uh, from government. If we were to have a consortium of tax shops in the province, mm. I think it will be much easier for them if they do bulk buying they are then able to uh, get some value as far as uh, uh, costs are concerned, and then they are able to achieve uh, profit margins that they are, they are looking at. So we think that um, we need to accelerate that particular thing. Of course, we'll tell them later about salons when you go to, to the ground on this matter. All right. This name change thing is now coming up quite a bit. As I'm sure you would imagine, people are going to fall on either side of this equation. Um, Kwena Semenya says, uh, why not name Northwest after J.B. Marx? Did Kotane do much more than J.B. Marx? And this is going to be the challenge that you have when you choose one person, isn't it? Because other people are going to say, hang on, my grandfather did this, my uncle did that, 
how do you come down to one person? <laughs> well, well, he, he, he has the right to suggest that it must be called Danny J.B. Max Prophets, if, if he wants to suggest that. <laughs> <laughs> But there was, no, there was no reference to the effect that maybe Ntate Kotani was better than Ntate Max. Actually, there's a proposal on our table we got from some people in Fenestop who are suggesting that uh, the new municipality that is going to emerge from merging of uh, Tloko municipality and Fenestop must be JB Max municipality. So we will look at those uh, particular proposals. But we are going to pursue the objective of renaming this province after Ntate uh, Kotani. But Generally, the, there is an agreement. But the question, I think, is, are you not saying then that other people who contributed are less important by doing this? There are many revolutionaries in this country, many, mm. who have contributed to where we are today. Many. They are countless. Mm. And therefore, it depends on at what point as a society do we come together to say we need to rename or name a building, a road, uh, or a province, or a municipality after these icons that have contributed to our revolution. For instance, uh, next month, we are honoring all cadres uh, who went to exile through Zirast and Mahike. Um, be they coming from the African National Congress or the PAC, it doesn't matter. We think that we need to do that. We also want to honor President Jacob Zuma in April. It is his birthday month, but also he was arrested um, in Ziras when he was going to, to exile at Klein Mariko. So those are some of the things that we think we need to do. And I, I don't think it's fair for us to be comparing icons and revolutionaries mm -hmm. Who brought, to, 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 who brought South Africa to where it is uh, uh, today. Every individual must be judged on his or her contribution in the struggle, and then we're able to move forward. All right, okay. I'm sure you're going to get a lot of debate on this one, but it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. We're going to take another quick break, and after that, we'll continue to look at your tweets, and then uh, we'll hear from Hendrik Vorte here in uh, this venue what his question is. Stay with us.